and uh, and hopefully that'll work. So um, in preparation for covering this um, Wednesday night session for Jill, I, I had a look at some of the uh, sessions in the last little while, and I was particularly struck by um, what I found in the recording last week. Um, and Jill talked about just showing up. And I loved that. Um, and so after I, you know, I watched that recording last week after I think Thursday, maybe. And since that time, I've really been thinking about how that's such a beautiful, gentle invitation into the practice that we start just by showing up. I had the sense when I was listening to her talk that it allows for all the possibilities of what can happen when we meditate. It allows for a busy mind, a settled mind, a restless or relaxed body. It allows for aversion and doubt. It allows for loving the practice, feeling calm and, and centered. Um, and it starts just by showing up. Um, and it also, you know, listening to that talk really made me reflect on my journey. Um, I thought about meditating long before I actually did it, but really had this sense that I can't do it. My mind's too busy. I'm too restless. I can't sit still. My knees would get sore right? Countless reasons why I wouldn't be able to meditate. Um, and then even after I started, the, the doubt really persisted. I had these ideas about getting someplace that I wasn't doing it right. Took really took quite a bit of time to realize um, that there is no right And I didn't realize that actually what allowed me to come to see it to see what the practice actually can be, the truth of the practice that it's not always easy. Uh, we don't have to be subtle. The mind doesn't have to be quiet. Luckily, I kept showing up and I borrowed faith from other people um, who I could see were benefiting. It wasn't just that they were saying you should do this. It was actually being able to see it, being able to see um, the effect of the practice on their lives. So, yeah, this notion of just showing up really resonated for me. And then I was thinking about, well, what comes next? First, we show up. So we've all shown up. We've all arrived in this Zoom room. And so the for me, I realized the practice has already started just by showing up. We're here uh, with this intention to practice mindfulness meditation and, and to just see what happens. And so I started to think about what are the steps in my practice. So there's the just showing up and then I take my seat and um, in whatever posture that might uh, be uh, tonight. So I'm already on the way with my practice. I've shown up, I've taken my seat. For me, it's this wooden chair that um, is actually fairly comfortable. It gives me good posture. Um, and our seat can take so many different forms. It could be a bench, a cushion, a chair, a couch, a bed, a floor. It could be the earth outside. Um, and you know, I, I'm using the word seat. We can also practice, obviously, standing and walking, mindfully moving. Um, but for the sake of um, this talk, I'll just refer to this as taking our seat. So we choose a posture um, that's supportive for the practice, that allows the mind to be alert um, that also allows us to be comfortable so that I'm not preoccupied by having put myself into a shape that causes a lot of pain and distraction. So 
in this moment, I'm aware that I'm supported by this chair and I'm actually moving a little bit in it um, to feel how the seat is supporting my sitting bones, uh, my thighs, at the, and that my spine can be tall and comfortable. And I'm also aware that I'm supported by the earth. Um, and sometimes I actually go down the road of recognizing that um, even the seat I'm sitting on is of the earth. Um, it's, it's actually not separate. So knowing that I have this steady seat beneath me, it allows me to let go a little bit to know that um, for me, there's something about arriving in this seat. So this chair is also an office chair sometimes. It's a chair I sit in when I am at my sewing machine. But when I know I'm practicing meditation, it takes on a bit of a different feeling. And it's a seat that allows me to practice, that supports me in practicing. So, um, yeah, so just notice um, for yourself um, how it is to be in this seat, this seat that we've arrived in to practice meditation. I found a, a quote by Achan Cha um, about this process of finding a seat, and it goes like this. Just go into the room. Put one chair in the center, take a seat in the center of the room, open the doors and windows and see who comes to visit. You will witness all kinds of scenes and actors, all kinds of temptations and stories, everything imaginable. Your only job is to stay in your seat. You will see it all arise and pass and out of this wisdom and understanding will come. So your only job is to stay in your seat and we don't need to stay absolutely still and not for hours and hours, it could be brief, but staying present, you will, you will see it all arise and pass and out of this wisdom and understanding will come. So we're really literally setting the foundation for our practice and taking our seat. And so um, you might relate to this, that there's something that changes, that there's something that allows us to know that when we take our seat for practice, um, I'm no longer needing to be busy. There's nobody I need to be. There's nothing I need to get done. Um, and maybe we can rest into the practice in that way, knowing how well we're supported. Um, and so there's a, there's a bit of a stream for me tonight. And so the next aspect that I wanted to share, and I hope this isn't too much, is about the notion of bringing a question into our practice. Um, and again, I was thinking about so now I've got, I've arrived, I've showed up, um, I've taken my seat, and now what will support me in bringing the attention inward to be present with what's here in this moment? And again, I was inspired by um, a talk that I heard on Tricycle uh, with Jane Hirschfield. So she's a a poet who has written poetry for many years. That's that's really quite beautiful. And her new um, collection is titled uh, The Asking. And it's about her um, experience with the benefit of resting the attention with a question. So we stay with a question without the hope of having an answer. The question is really about uh, creating a sense of spaciousness, um, curiosity. Um, you know, we sometimes use the word investigation. I'm going to check out what's going on, try to understand it, um, or try to see it, not so much understand it in terms of uh, answering the question. 
Um, and so if, if you're interested, it's a, a talk on tricycle. That's quite lovely. And so there are some specific questions that she was suggesting. One of them is, what is this? And this is a question that I've heard Martine Batchelor ask or, and suggest in, in her teachings. So the very simple question, what is this? The other question Jane mentions is, how now go on? I love the awkward language. It makes me really um, kind of stay with the question, how now go on? And the, the third one is, how can I keep opening my eyes to each morning's fresh news? So... I love this idea of maybe starting the day with that and, and um, yeah, any time of the day. How can I keep opening my eyes to the fresh news that maybe just, uh, just arose? So again, the idea behind um, asking a question is to help us to move beyond knowing or the belief that we, that we know the answer, that, that we know um, the right thing, that we have firm opinions or ideas, when we become curious, we make space for other things to be possible, other truths to be possible. Um, so this is something that we could potentially bring into the practice tonight, if you like, and, and you can just see how it feels. Um, yeah, over the years, um, I I sat with Martine Batchelor many years ago in a in a um, a weekend retreat in Toronto, and so every once in a while I remember her instruction to work with that question, um, and it particularly is helpful for me when my mind is really busy, it um, because I float the question without trying to answer it, so it's just. I ask the question and then settle into the practice and, and see what might come up. Um, you know, we don't know what um, might show up in this body, heart, and mind when we practice. Um, and when we create this sense of spaciousness, um, yeah, something unexpected might come up. So, um, I think I will leave it at that for now. And um, I wonder if we could settle into our um, posture for, for practice. So if there are any um, changes that you'd like to make in the way that you're sitting, um, you might want to lie down. An option that I find helpful if, if I'm Sleepy sometimes is to lie on the ground with my legs up on a chair or a couch. That seems to um, satisfy the wish to lie down, but also keeps me a little bit alert. So taking a few minutes to find a posture that will best support you tonight. And that might be different than any other time that you've practiced. So we choose a posture that... Um, allows the body to be comfortable and that supports enough alertness to be present with what's um, what's going on in this body heart mind as we practice. So I'm just going to ring the bell in a moment um, and just wanted to let you know that I will offer a little bit of guidance at the beginning and then maybe a little bit through the practice um, and then we'll ring the bell three times at the end and we'll sit for about 25 minutes. So, so to begin taking in the sound of the singing bowl. And so this sound arriving at the ears is also an invitation to draw the awareness inward. 
noticing that as the sound was heard, as the sound was perceived by the ears, there was nothing we needed to do. We're all able to sit back and rest into the seat and just allow the sound to be there. And so if there's a little bit more adjustment, that would be a benefit as you settle into the practice. Let yourself move or shift or stretch a little bit. And then very gradually allowing the body to come to stillness. And maybe it's a relative stillness. Maybe there's going to be a little bit of movement through this practice period. Resting into the support, the support that I've chosen for this body. And if you like, you might begin by taking a few deep breaths. You might follow the in-breath with the awareness, drawing the awareness inward as the breath comes in. And as the exhale goes out, letting go of anything that's not needed right now. And so if it um, feels comfortable staying with the breath in this way for a few more moments, and then allowing the breath to find its natural rhythm again, If you like, allow the attention to rest with the breath or with the body. Choosing a place to rest the attention, to rest the awareness that feels supportive tonight. If the notion of floating a question at the beginning of the practice feels supportive, you might just ask the question in your own mind, just softly saying the words and then set it aside. As though this question is just um, laying a bit of a foundation, a bit of a prompt, and then I can let it go. There's no hurry with this. We can take our time. No place to get to. as though I'm sitting in the center of the room and simply noticing what arrives, who arrives, sensations, thoughts, emotion, sound, so we simply open without going out looking for something. We're simply receptive.
Noticing the arising and passing of whatever comes into awareness. None of it solid, impermanent, not mine to cling to. Kind and gentle with ourselves as we bring the awareness back to how things are in this moment. And noticing how lovely it is when mindfulness is present, like, oh, mindfulness. Mindfulness is here.
just as the body is resting on the support of the chair and the earth, resting awareness in this body, heart, mind. If the mind has gotten busy, come back to the breath or body or floating the question.
This poem is by Jane Hirschfield. Today when I could do nothing. Today when I could do nothing, I saved an ant. It must have come in with the morning paper still being delivered to those who shelter in place. A morning paper is still an essential service. I am not an essential service. I have coffee and books, time, a garden, silence enough to fill cisterns. It must have walked the morning paper as if loosened ink taking the shape of an ant, then across the laptop computer, warm, then onto the back of a cushion. Small black ant alone, crossing a navy cushion, moving steadily because that is what it could do. Set outside in the sun, it could not have found it again its nest. What then did I save? It did not move as if it was frightened, even while walking my hand, which moved it through swiftness and air. Ant alone without companions, whose ant heart I could not fathom. How is your life? I wanted to ask. I lifted it, took it outside. This first day when I could do nothing, contribute nothing, beyond staying distant from my own kind, I did this. Thank you for your practice. Oh, and so um, there's um, there's some time if you'd like to unmute and um, if if it's comfortable you could uh, put your video on. Um, obviously, just if whatever you're comfortable with. So how how was your practice? Thank you. 